Hello, it's Bini here. Today on the 26th of July, I'd like to share a little bit about the expiry of the different months of contract and how this expiry, that means the expiry of the current month and then moving on to the next month, how it's going to affect your trading. Actually, when we move from the different month, all right, let's say the July month, which is the current month, to the next month, it doesn't really affect uh, your trading. If you are, let's say, day trading, that means you open a trade in a day and you close it during the day. Or even if you are doing a short-term trading, like uh, if you like to maintain a position for a few days, all right? Now, um, it says that uh, when you are trading into the end of the lifespan of a contract then if you're going to hit near to the last trading day or the expiry then you have to pay extra money to uh, do a rollover what is a rollover it means that you close your current month contract and you open up the new contract in the new month in the same direction all right now let's take a look at right now uh, date today is 26th of july 2021 all right, we are near to the end of the month, end of the July, all right? And, and that's really very fast. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this Simsky July contract and to look at the contract specification. All right, now this is the contract specification. All right, okay. So we have the uh, exchange and then the symbol and the uh, contract month. All right, the initial margin as well as the last trading day. So this means that on the 29th of July, 2021 will be the last trading day of this July contract. Now that means that uh, on the 30th, 30th of July, right, you can no longer trade this contract anymore because then on the 30th, it's going to expire. All right. Now then what can you do when you... Uh, have a contract that's near to expiry then we have to as trader right we have to shift to the uh, new month of trading because we are at july right now so the next month will be august so how do you know when you should be shifting to the new month then we have to take a look at the volume here so this is the volume for the july month it's right now at about 4 13 pm it's trading about fifty four thousand contracts all right but the august month so this is the august which is the next month is doing about thirty two thousand. now usually when it's at the start of the month all right uh, the current month would have a heavier volume and the next month would have literally a zero volume or maybe like you're gonna have like maybe one or two contracts or um even less than 10 contracts right but as as the as the day starts to move all right, and nearer to the end of the month, we start to see that the new month will have more volume coming in. So when you see as a gauge right, that when the current month and the new month has almost equal number of contracts, and that's one of the clues that you know that you should be shifting to the new month already. Now let's take a look at the July month here. In July, the Simsky contract is trading about 357, whereas in August, that's about 353.3. Now, what does this mean, right? It means that the futures traders has priced in that in the August, likely that the Simsky will be trading lower. Okay, It doesn't mean that there's a gap. It just means that the traders are a little bit bearish, negative going into the month of August. All right. Then the next question is that what will be your impact? Do you have an impact here? Now the answer is no, because as you can see, the July moved in the same extent as the August. So for example, today the July moved about four points, and the August is also moving about four points. Okay. So you don't really have an impact if you if you are to trade into the July and then next moment you trade into the August, it doesn't mean that there's a gap here. There's no gap. It just means that the pricing is different. It's more like, for example, in the month of July, you're going to buy an apple. In the month of August, you're going to buy orange. So they are different things, Okay, even though they are fruits, but then they are different fruits. So in August, you like to eat orange and then in July, you're eating apple. Okay? But they move in the same extent, right? Now, um, what you need to take note, note of is also that as we get nearer to the end of the 
uh, last trading day. All right, the spread between the current month and the new month would almost be equi equivalent. Okay, so for example, the spread right now for the August it's about 0.1. All right, so that's two ticks, and then for the July it's also about two ticks, 0.1. Right, so there's there's literally nothing. Uh, that you need to fear about the expiry of the contract. However, one thing is that your strategy, very important, has to ha be able to handle for this rollover. Okay, so for example, if your strategy doesn't cater to this rollover, then you're going to find that uh, it's a little bit tough during the rollover months. Okay, uh, what do I mean by your strategy has to cater that? So usually, a price-based strategy will be able to handle the rollover month. That means that we're going to roll over to the new month with no problem. When you are using an indicator-based strategy, such as, for example, uh, like uh, moving average is an indicator, it's being derived from, from price, all right, then when the broker is to merge between the uh, new month and the current month, then you're going to have this gap here and the indicator has to readjust itself. Okay, so. When this happens, you have to be able to readjust your strategy. So therefore, when you are trading into the futures, you have to take note that your strategy has to be able to handle that rollover. Alright, so uh, that's a little bit of introduction into trading into futures and into Simski. I'll be doing a lot more lesson on how to trade into Simski. For example, today, we had a wonderful day uh, to trade into the Simski. All right, for example, well, the regional index uh, is, is bearish. Like, for example, the US indexes, they are bearish and the Hong Kong uh, isn't doing well. STI also, in a way, moved in sympathy with the regional index. And then we have an opportunity for a trade into Simski. So, for example, uh, we traded into Simski around the 359 region, right, in the... July contract, so that's the 359 region, and then it moved to the 356, uh, uh, 357. So that's a uh, two points movement for us. Okay, two points movement essentially will be equal to about $200 per contract, 200 SGD per contract, right? Uh, one of the reasons why I like to trade in the Simski is because it is really very um, predictable so we almost can know what's going to happen every day if you know the right um, uh, strategy to use okay so i'm going to see you guys next time when i talk about how to trade the simski and the other instruments